Ray, welcome back. I pulled these out, so there's a big job on. Awning. So what we've done, we've ordered an F80 awning right. Now I was gonna go Thule and that, but they're just too expensive at the minute for what they are. I wanted a snug fit to the roof, but because it's a medium wheel bit, you can't get it. Because the curvature of the van, the front side, but the back end dropped quite a lot and it's quite deceiving. So that's gonna be today's task. So what we'll do, I'll show you up here now. So the awning rail, right, is going to have to go down this channel here. And you can see straight away that panels are in the way, so these are going to have to be shifted. Now, the previous owner who had this van, he fitted these panels to it originally when he was, he was going to do his conversion. God send for me, because I've got two Victron 175 watt panels out of it. They're in a bad place. And the initial plan was to do the Unistrut, you know, roof rack mod. And I was putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And then we went away not long back and um, we needed an awning. The, the van just it just didn't feel right, you know, without an awning and that. So I bit the bullet, bought an awning. But now I'm going to have to deal with these solar panels now. So with this awning system, right, you're going to have to fit brackets. One at the front there. One at sticker number five here, which is underneath. So that's going to have to be shuffled back. Now, what I might do in the interim, depending on how much overhang you have on that side, is shuffle this panel back enough to clear that section. It's going to look shit on that side, but until I get the unistrut, that's going to have to be done. And then same with this one, that's going to have to be shuffled back. But what I will do, or what I can do, is these panels, right, they're only about what? So look how wide they are. So we've got 26 and a half inch there, so 50, 53 inch here panel side to side and ideally I'd like them to run like lengthways of the van so instead of running widthways run lengthways which would have saved me an asshole with that max van when I was cutting that bloody camera system out so these are 58 and a half or 58 and a half across so if I step from here to work bloody um, pieces here so you said 58 and a half so 58 and a half comes half a panel here so that'd be ideal that putting them lengthways before I even jump into that first I'm going to shift the panels over but what I'm going to do is see where these awning panels lie three brackets sorry and then see where the awning sits and and then if I can, probably pop the awning off again. The hole's what's not been used, so it'll be, I think, the, I think the brackets go one, two, five, nine, ten, uh, back here. You can see I've popped that one off already for a toot. And um, I'll see where the panel, where this awning lies. If I can, it's probably put section of unit strut on three and four, five's tuck up, so then I can use six and seven, and then a full length piece the other side. Flip the panels round, and then I'll see how high the unit strut sits, whether I can get in on this section here underneath the awning onto it. So there's a lot of ifs and maybes with this one. So we'll have to see how this pans out, but every time I do a job, me, it's just snout straight forward. You know, I just don't make it easy for myself at all. So we'll get these on, we'll get this panel shifted now. So I'll unpop them and I'll probably just knock a couple of balls in. Do you know what? You never know, I might even just go and get some bloody uni stuff and go and get some there and try that. But I need to get the awning on first to see where it lines up, really. Right, so bracket system on this. These instructions are a bit mental for setting up. Sort of like got my head around it, like I've got a gist of how it's going and that. Big into the front, these two here. The big one is going to go on this runner here. That's the bit what attaches to the van and this attaches to that. So big one here now, these mounts on them. And I'll bracket, which goes on it. And then that basically attaches to that. Get it right where it is. There's three bolt holes, there's actually more than that, but one's for an end bracket. Basically, that attaches onto there, and that middle hole there is a rocker pin. So that actually goes into there, like that. Don't look really that, but that's where it's supposed to be anyway. And then a pin goes in that, and that allows that to move up and down. So I said, instructions don't look very good, do they? And you have to make sure you get it right way around as well. One's is left hand drive, and one's right hand drive. And no one joins it, it'll end up knocking the wrong side up. Yeah, so it's really that. As you can see, there, there's your all, that's facing front. It's the direction of the van. Oh, I thought it was going fucking stupid then, mate. Because you'd think that that'd sit inside that, wouldn't you? And then you've got a rubber gasket on bottom. And that just sits on your van, that. It looks straight forward. <laughs> Pretty much the same for all the rest of them. Little old bracket on it. Pin goes through there. I'll build all them up in a minute. One thing what did come with this pack, all the fixtures and fittings are all uh, M M6. The holes on the van, they're slightly bigger. And the problem I've got is, because I've gone out about tit, Go take a piss out of that. I was going to change that, but somebody stole my thunder and they fitted something I was going to fit and they just released a video on it, so we can't do that now because it was just class as copying money, really. So that'd be another job, getting rid of that shite thing. Anyway, back to this. So, on here, on the holes, because I've already built my van inside and left this as a last minute job, which really should have been done at the start, I can't bolt from inside because all my interior, my roof's up, my units are up, and I've just done it backward basically. So what I'm gonna have to do now is I'm using like a rib nut solution, but I'm not using a rib nut. I'm gonna be using a, another type of nut. So what I've got here is 
what I'm going to be using. So normally a normal rib nut is that size, that's an M8 rib nut that one. And yeah they're good, but the problem is with these you get a lot of spinning issues with it and you've not got bigger radius, you know, for spreading the load on it. And with it being on a roof and you've got wind, all that shit, you know what I mean? It, it, essentially you can put, pretty much pull that through the bodywork really. So the problem I had is this kit, all the hardware is M6, and you look, an M6 hull, an M6 rib nut, there's too much gap in it. You know what I mean? Way too much play on that. So I've had to upgrade everything to M8. So we're going M8 there. Now the hole's slightly smaller, which is better for me because I can step it up then a couple of mil just to make the M8 rib nut fit in it. But like I said, we're not using the rib nut, we're going to be using a plus nut. Now a plus nut, same thing as that. It's just taller. But what happens is when you crimp, when you squash these down or when you install them, these side fins here, instead of that just squashing up like a round ring around it, like a little washer, probably the same width as what bloody head is. This opens up into like four branches. So you've got like quite a lot of meat, which spread out in like a stir effect. And you get a lot of better grip with that. And with the better grip with it, you're going to get less spinach as well. And also it's a lot stronger and it spread the weight out. So that's what we'll be using for that anyway. So everything's going to be upgraded to M8. That's, that's the theory behind it anyway. I mean, stick it something in comments if you think it's wrong. But I think with everything being installed now, that's the only route you've got rather than ripping everything out, which I'm not doing. And I think the plus nuts are going to be ample for what I'm sticking on here. So we're going to measure this now, this uh, plus nut. Jonesy's batteries run out on this thing, so we're doing it manually. So for that, it's looking like just under 12 mil. Another cheeky trick is as well, if you've got one of these little uh, drill boxes here with sizes on, right? If you just check out, do an example of 10.5, get your plus nut, you see? So you know in 11, 10.5 is not going to fit, and rather than shoot straight to a 12 and have it slack Alice, I mean, look at, look at the gappage on that. That's a 12, and you're going to get a bit of a sideway wobble on your drill bit. I think a 12 might be too big. So look. If you're chanting 11, see what that comes up like. Look at that. Perfect. That is no very little movement on that. I mean 11. So we're not doing 12, we're doing 11, pal. Just a little thing, isn't it, really? If it's dry. So we piss them out on it. I've seen a few people paint these as well, you know, where the actual paint's not over it, but that is actually undercoat, what's on the inside of that. So when you've got your seal on top, and then you put your rubber seal over the top of that and a bit more shite in it, you're not gonna rush that. I'm getting over for my filings. Every time I go to use a bloody Uber, so it's always blocked off, someone's left it. Pisses me right off. Tap that in there, and that's a proper snug fit. So when you actually install that, it'll be tight. There's not very little spinach on it, and get a bit of seal in there as well. So just taking this uh, proud edge off it here now, just so I get a better seal on it. Little bit on and just rocked up, just in time. Get in. Do you know what Avon man stops you and he has a five minute chin wag what you up to and that and it turns into like an hour. Good job I didn't see a lot there when he come gas in. Jesus Christ. Pile of load inside it and get a rib nut. Make sure it's level. And give it a yank. As you can see there now. That sick has put a nice seal around here. But it's also sealed inside there. You see it threads where it's pulled up so that'll flange out that with four wings. We'll do the rest of them there. So get nine and ten done. Do five and one and two. They're all prep ready then. Ready for brackets, we'll let that sealer go off as well with them. A bit more sealer in that, just so we don't get no leaks. I'll put a link in the description as well for that little bad boy. You can get the deep reds for plus nuts, because these are a bit of a shit for finding. You get a bag of them with it like, but I'll stick a link in, you can have a two. Do you know what? I don't think I've just shown you peeling these stickers off here. So basically where the paint line is there, I've got a tiny little screwdriver. And just underneath it. Basically it's just a sticker, painted over. No bung. Bloody sticker. Great change of plan. Panels are gonna have to come off. If you look under there, yeah, the bolts, right, that's there. I can get a 10 mil socket into them, but can't reach a spanner down to it. But because they've left too much thread on the bolt, the socket doesn't go over it to stop it spinning when you're undoing the outside. So, I'm gonna have to take these. Can you shake things off, Anna? So basically, pop these off, break the seals on this, so I can get the panel off these. It's forcing me to do a job, innit, this? It's forcing me to take them out. So I think the plan is, whip these off, put some bungs in them holes for the time being, I'm up in this weather. It stays all right. It's forecast for all right for a couple of days, but weatherman lies down our way. And then I might be have to do the unistruct. So I think plan of attack now, get them holes up, clean all that shite off, and then let's have a rearrangement. An awning, he says. Oh, it's easy. If I'm on said this morning, oh, it's easy. I'd be flying through that. Guess what that's doing? Spinning round inside. There's obviously a nut inside under the roof, insulation, all that shite. And the fucking thing is you're spinning right round, baby. I think we're gonna be whizzing them off now with a whizzer. This is turning to a right mesh, this one. I think I'm gonna change my channel name to something, something like the Never Goes Reet channel. That's what it is, every job I do never goes right. Well, that's all, bolts chopped off. 
Look, can you stare at them? That whiz all them off in there and all. Right mess. I'm not using them brackets again, won't we, lad? Right, now that turned into a ball ache, that one. Panel's gone. Got a blank canvas. So I think plan is now we're going electrical shop in a minute, get some Unistrut. It's in a black paint. Spray that up, it's black. I think I'll do a three meter section on that side. Over there, like a nice crap up. And then I'm gonna piece this side here so the panels will run that way. Should look a lot tighter as well and a bit more lower profile as well than what they were because they were set quite high, weren't they, really? And them just fucking hate the plastic thing. Really. Do these nice, pop these bolts through, clean all the shite off and touch up any scotch marks. Just fit an awning, lad. Right, so for this, it comes these rubber pads. So what I'm gonna do is just put a clutch of silicon under them just so it's got more seal on it. Probably a bit of overkill, like, but you just want to make sure, don't you? Bracket then goes on there, bang out of mates in. So I'm not going to put these in dead tight yet because the simple fact is when you get the brackets on, you've got to make sure it's all lined up. Get the bracket on, line my pin up. So this one a bit number four on top. Basically that just runs in there like that. You can see inside there where it connects to. It's like a threaded bar and it goes through it, screws in. You can see the step, what you have on a medium wheelbase. On long wheelbase it's quite flat for the size of the ones you have, but with this, that's how much the roof tapers down. So you have quite a gap there as it comes in. Get some foam shit for that though. Right, so this middle one, this one has to be built up on this one because you're not getting the pinning once it's on the top of the roof. So this middle one's the same, but with pinning there and it rotates side to side on that one. I've already put the M8 bolt straight through it because it's a ball lake. Trying to get that in there and it's all built up. What I'm going to do here is silicon eye rubber up again, stick that back down, screw that one in. Left this one a bit loose as well, so I've got a bit of side to side on that one there. It's got an up and down pivot and then we'll get the string line up and then we'll make sure it's all straight. Right, so this front one, pinned at front there. This one's slightly different because where that goes in there, it's like an old, massive overlap, you know, on it from the bracket. The only difference is this one, it's built the same as the other ones, right, but this one's got an end cap on. So then that, goes on there. That one just screws on there like that. So off this one here, rubber gaskets on, M8 to three. Just put a splodge in them, fill them all up. So that's the front bracket on. At least the gap's not too bad here. Depends how far the awning comes over here. Middle one, and then the ISM one. So what we'll do now, get a string line up, and then we'll see these uh, straight. Yeah. String line on. Looking good. So we've been shopping. Got three three meter uni struts, and these are um, 41 21. You don't want it too high on it. So my mate, um, fixtures, what they call so these are shallow spring ones. These I was after the fast fix ones, but they didn't have any stock. But they take like 20 odd p. Do a good job. And some end caps as well. Bit of silicon tape going on, so we don't chaff up bodywork. And we've got to spray these up in a matte black enamel spray. See how Jones's Frankenstein roof wrap turns out. I think all that was about 50 quid in total. So not bad really, considering how much a roof rack costs. I think we're going to get our roof now, get all that silicon shit cleaned up best we can, give the roof a good scrub in, and I've got to plug them holes as well. This is a three metre section here now, and it just fits in that channel, just off front bit there. And then that back end there, you can bolt that down. So I'm just going to see where these line up on here. So the plan is, we'll have that one on here, just below that. So obviously I'll have a couple of wash on that, but 41 mil will be up here. Between the awning, because obviously it needs to be lower, is run a piece on that section and then that front section is run a piece along there so then i can put two cross members so one across here and then one across the back section here and then that should allow me then to put my panels lengthways should but we'll see how that works so i'm just going to mark this up now and see where my holes line up on these see where my stickers go to right so that's where the panels have mounted could be on them plastic brackets right and it's left these holes you know in the ceiling so i've just cleaned all the um sickerflex shit up and i've got these got that little bungs gapping and they come in loads of different sizes and stuff you get on amazon but that would be a perfect fit for that hopefully so what i'll do is i'll put a bit of sicker in that fill that up plumb that in and we should have a good seal on it so that's one put in with sicker inside it and then i'll just put a bit of sicker on the outside of it as well yeah it's black but it looks tidier than what it was anyway but they should stop the water getting in there i'll stick a link in the description for them because they, they are worth it like there's loads of different sizes and you're, su you're surprised how many things how many holes you make with stuff and that but they're good right so these bad boys have been trimmed down now these are for the two gaps between the awning and then we've got the big three meter one what i've done with this one i've just notched an edge off that because the bodywork of the van comes around at the front so it gives me a bit of room movement on that one so i'm going to knock a bit of undercoat on these then we'll put some black on it and then uh, we'll let them dry while we piss about with the roof first of the rails going up now he's spread up what i'll do with these holes here before i put the bolts in i'm going to fill these with sicker flex basically just make sure they're all watertight once i complete with end caps can better that now, innit? That's a little bit of a, a roof right into it. Right, so that's that second side done there. As you can see, chomped that edge off there. 
come through and then put a cap on that one plugged all these little holes as well on top give me right mess that roof i think tomorrow we're going to be doing the cross beams then and we'll see how we get on with solar panels let's make some l brackets and all Not enough today man been on this all day so that's the cross members done sprayed up now and as you can see it's a new funky paint color here now because as soon as i sprayed them up it absolutely pissed it down so more paint drawing yeah, they'll do the job then. They'll do the job. Right, let's get these put up there now, see what these are like. I've also got some Unistrut L brackets, right? So my plan is with this, because I want the um, solar panels to be like quite low profile, because we stuck up like a sort of last time. So these have got top end here, on top of panel. So that'll go on Unistrut there, which is on the van. So you imagine that's the roof rail. That'll go on there like that. But I want it to be that way. So that'll attach the panels, the panel should fit round there, just keeps it in line with the, the strut. I'll see what space we've got between it because it's quite tight. Once the rail's up there, I'll have to pack this end up a bit. Why can't I just make a straight roof? Makes life so difficult, VW and fucking, that's VW in it. Man VW, same shit. No, we have the shittest weather forecast as well, I'll tell you. Not a forecast rain today, they said tomorrow's coming in. It's not stopped pissing down all day. So that's where these sit now, you see they sit on the ribs of the roof there now. I couldn't go for a 41 mil tall, which would have been better because I need the clearance. So it's roughly where the awning goes to on here. In hindsight, I probably might have got away with a 41, but lower down, you're not going to get it there on that one. It's going to be really close that. So we're on 21 anyway. So what I'm going to do, I think, is pack these out at the bottom. Probably get some spaces up to there. See what I can dig out. And then just probably lift that off the body with a touch both sides just a bug stick well, it's not too bad that's not a nice step that's a bit of a channel in between it but same again it's got to be stepped up we'll see how that um lines up just off the bodywork and then we should get the panels in there that's gonna be the next piece of shape for tech off right could do we get that awning on really put the awning on and see how much i've got to play with this because depending what that profile that awning is coming through here i might have to chamfer this top piece off here and just leave the bottom bit the connecting point and just probably knock that corner off there get the awning up now i think see if that fits now i've not even tested that yet and then we can put these struts on then see where we line up with That was ever fucking hell. Probably have to shuffle that over a bit as well towards the front bit. Well, she's on, man. Look at all this crap peeled off. Look at that bad boy. Happy with that. Very nice. Looks good in black as well. They do sit proud at the back end though. See that there? There's quite a gap on that. But I suppose you can't do you now with the medium wheelbase because the roof's like, like a fucking oval. Get these solar bloody struts on there. Well, she opens up anyway. No issues. This is a bit of a bonus. I'm not going to whip it all the way out because it's windy as out here today. It's this step piece in here now. You can see inside. This cross member. Just put another unistrut on top of here now and double that up because there's quite enough room in that one for it to do it and also blocks this gap off here a little bit better. Not much, but it gives me a back thing then for filling this in. And if you see, it lifts it quite a few mil off the bodywork there. So then the other side, we only have to shim up a little bit. So these, right, they're just like a spring loaded nut, but square one was in unistrut. And basically, just stick it in there, push it down, and spin the fuck, just spin it. Now it's locked in place then, so then you can just bring another unit strut over, line it up where you want it, and then just put a piece in there. And that's it. And that should bolt that one down, the next one then I'll go to the top and then I can screw this one into that. So that's that double rail fastened down now, just puts the main caps on it as well, just ties it up a bit. Those panels there are 149, and we've got 153 from there to there, that's ample that. So what I'll do is I'll put this one in loose, screw that fair end one down where it is. So for this cross member here, what I've done, just cut down a little bit of union strut here and put some end caps on it, just so it looks tidy then and looks part of it. And then that then will sit flush on there like that and that's my little step up there and it just gives me enough clearance on the bodywork because them two middle ridges there they're quite it's like like a ball shape so there's just enough under that there and it gives me enough room then for get the brackets on for the panel not too bad though it's that front one there there's a little stump well it's nearly 10 o'clock on a friday night jones is still outside it's absolutely chucking down 
I'll tell you what, we've got the panels up, breached all the cables, got to tie all them up, just need to fasten them off now, I'm just missing some little spaces for here. Put these on, because just pick them up off the bodywork a bit on them ridges there. Doesn't that look like a better layout that now, doesn't it? It's also a lot lower profile than the other panels, a lot lower. My pity is. Right, I've had enough. Piss wet, cold. And I'm going to have a beer. See you on next one.